The following is a class given by His Holiness Jaya Pataka Swami Maharaj on September 6, 1981. The class begins with a reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Text 4. Namang Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Shamini Tinamini Namaste Sarasati Deve Gaura Vani Pracharine Nivisesha Sanhavadhi Paschatya Deshitarine Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prima Pradayati Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gauratri Namo Nama Panchatatatma Kam Krishna Bhakta Rupa Swarupa Kam Bhakta Bhattarang Bhakta Kam Namami Bhakti Shakti Kam E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pote Gopesa Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneswari Vrishabhanu Sutta Devi Prananami Hari Priye Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Jaya Daita Gudadharo Sri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Narayanam Namaskritya Naranjaiva Narotama Devin Saraswati Vasa Tato Jaya Mudiya Jet Mukha Karoti Vachalang Pangulangayate Giring Yati Patamang Vande Sri Guru Madinataninam Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1 Chapter 16 Text 4 Nijagraho Jasavirya Kalinga Digvi Jaye Kvachit Nipalinga Darang Sudrang Nantango Mithunang Pada Translation by His Divine Grace Shila Prabhupada Once when Maharaja Parikshit was on his way to conquer the world, he saw the master of Kali Yuga, who was lower than a sudra, disguised as a king and hurting the legs of a cow and bull. The king at once caught hold of him to deal sufficient punishment. Translation with repetition. Once when Maharaja Parikshit was on his way, to conquer, the world. to conquer the world. 
He saw the master of Kali Yuga. He saw the master of Kali Yuga. Who was lower than a sudra. Who was lower than a sudra. Disguised as a king. Disguised as a king. And hurting the legs. And hurting the legs. Of a cow and bull. Of a cow and bull. The king at once caught hold. The king at once caught hold. Of him. Of him. To deal sufficient punishment. To deal sufficient punishment. Report by Srila Prabhupada. The purpose of a king's going out to conquer the world is not for self-aggrandizement. Maharaja Parikshit went out to conquer the world after his ascendance on the throne. But this was not for the purpose of aggression on other states. He was the emperor of the world and all small states were already under his regime. His purpose in going out was to see how things were going on in terms of the godly state. The king being the representative of the Lord has to execute the will of the Lord duly. There is no question of self-aggrandizement. Thus as soon as Maharaja Parikshit saw that a lower class man in the dress of a king was hurting the legs of a cow and bull, at once he arrested and punished him. The king cannot tolerate insults to the most important animal, the cow nor can he tolerate disrespect for the most important man, the Brahmana. Human civilization means to advance the cause of Brahminical culture and to maintain it, cow protection is essential. There is a miracle in milk, for it contains all the necessary vitamins to sustain human physiological conditions for higher achievements. Brahminical culture can advance only when man is educated to develop the quality of goodness, and for this there is a prime necessity of food prepared from milk, fruits and grains. Maharaja Parikshit was astonished to see that a black sudra dressed like a ruler was mistreating a cow, the most important animal in human society. The age of Kali means mismanagement and quarrel. And the root cause of all mismanagement and quarrel is that worthless men with the modes of lower class men who have no higher ambition in life, come to the helm of the state management. Such men at the post of a king are sure to first hurt the cow and the Brahminical culture, thereby pushing all society towards hell. Maharaja Parikshit, trained as he was, got the scent of this root cause of all quarrel in the world. Thus he wanted to stop it in the very beginning. Thus in the purport by Srila Prabhupada. And how Parikshit received the age of Kali. So, <clears throat> Maharaja Parikshit didn't waste any time. As soon as he saw that the cow was being tortured, immediately arrested Kali. Actually, he was immediately prepared to kill Kali for his offense. To kill a cow or to torture a cow, that was enough to cause a death sentence without any hesitation. Of course, we know that Kali surrendered to Parikshit, therefore, he was able to get a pardon from immediate death. The even today, Nepal, the only Hindu kingdom in the world, if someone kills a cow, the penalty is a life imprisonment. <clears throat> There's not even <clears throat> any question about it. Immediately one gets life imprisonment. So, the Vedic culture is so perfect because it puts the spiritual goal, the spiritual direction on the top. Because the cows and the brahmanas are essential for spiritual development. Therefore, they are protected by the king. Actually, the cow is simply doing service for the whole human society. 
Everything, even the urine and stool of the cow, is used in the service of the human beings. In India, they prepare liver medicine to cure liver and kidney diseases from cow urine. And it is used in various religious ceremonies. And cow dung is so widely used as a ready-made floor and wall plaster. In the simple houses that the people make, they build mud houses. Mud house, someone may think, is very primitive. But I personally have met even some millionaires in Bangladesh who have built whole compounds of mud house. Because it's much more comfortable than a brick house. A brick house is uh, very cold. And in the summer, if it gets very hot, brick house will also radiate the heat, especially the concrete roof. But in mud house, they build about 20 inch walls, two stories high, with a grass roof. In the summer, it's very cool, just like air conditioning. And in the winter, when it's cold out, of course it's not so cold, but then it gets chilly for the local people. Then those earthen houses are very warm. So they put over the earth and mud mix. And that plaster of the cow dung and mud mixture, that is very smooth and very refreshing to see. It's just hard and very clean. And there's a special property that wherever they put that cow dung and mud mix, no fly will land. It keeps away flies. Automatic fly repellent. Where concrete does not have that quality. And because of the cost being nothing, so they, even in the front yard, they have a certain area, they also smooth down the front yard. And every day they put down a fresh. In South India, over the cow dung, they also put some rice flour and make some design. Different swastikas and different colorful designs in front of the house. In this way, when one sees that in front of the house, the road has been cleaned, cow dung is put down, whole, it's, so, it's so refreshing. It's so much in the mode of goodness. Srila Prabhupada was sitting in his grass hut in Mayapur. And he said that this grass hut, you see, with the cow dung and the mud and the grass and the bamboo, this is in the mode of goodness. Didn't require any great industrialization, any great endeavor. It was very simply done and is very pure and refreshing. This is in the mode of goodness. This is perfect for advancing in spiritual life. For our own advancement in Krishna consciousness, this is enough. We don't need anything else. We can live in a little house like this in the side of the Jamuna or the Ganges, chant Hare Krishna and become Krishna conscious. Develop our love for Krishna and go back to Godhead. But, you see, then he said that, with that time we were building our four-story building. And he said that that four-story building with its brick and concrete and steel and cement, that building is in the mode of passion. Rajaguna. So many cement mixers, vibrators, going on just to make a house, right? People climbing up the fourth floor, one person fell off, one person got electrocuted but survived. So much passion and endeavor. Right, to build a house. Why someone would go through such? And here I saw and while driving through Switzerland, 400 feet it must have been high the, with the big scaffolding and cranes building uh, the road right through, digging tunnel through the Alps, way up in the top of the mountain and then going through the ravine, all the huge uh, bridges and then going like that. In one building in New York, how many pe dozens of people lost their lives? falling off those scaffoldings, these big bridges and dams. So this is the mode of passion. The Prophet said, we're building also this building is in the mode of passion. 
But we are constructing it not because it's for our own bhajan, but because we require this type of facility to bring the people here. If we live in a little hut under the tree, who will come in this Kali Yuga? Therefore, we've constructed this big building and big project and big temple so people will come and sit down and chant Hare Krishna and hear Krishna Kotha. Hear the discourses on Krishna qualities and pastimes and become purified and stay here and perform devotional service. But for our own personal bhajan, this is enough. The only reason we're doing all this big construction and big buildings is for preaching Krishna consciousness. Uh, so the cow is so nice that for simple living and high thinking, it's giving all the necessary products, for even for house building. For house building, for health, for intelligence, the milk, and so many nice Products are coming from the cow. <clears throat> Even after the cow dies, you can make madranga drums, shoes from the cow hide. Why kill the cow? And you know, when they kill cows, the hide goes bad. So they have to put salt in the skin. All the shoes that are made from cow hide have salt in the skin. But that's the one thing is you cannot make a madranga from a salted hide. It won't. You can't make it. It won't. It won't. Uh, it won't work. It loses that quality. You have to make a uh, madranga drum only from an unsalted uh, skin. And so that unsalted skin means that as soon as the cow dies, then the skin has to be taken out and cured in the sun and so on and so forth. It can't. It can't just be salted and stored, which is what all the slaughterhouses do. And then they take their time at curing them later. So we can see that of also the Madranga drum requires non-violent cow. All right, cow, once it's dead, his soul is left, then you can use the hide. No harm. Use it for Madranga drum. That will even be a greater benefit. The cow will, is uh, given his skin for serving Krishna. Nowadays, just like in our uh, hospital, when we opened up the hospital, official inauguration in Mayapur, one uh, Jyotin Chakravarti, who was worker of the Communist Party, Marxist, Leninist group, he was one of the people who was very much against our movement. And uh, he started a criminal case against Bhavananda Goswami and so many other nonsense things. <clears throat> but when he saw that we we're opening up a hospital for the people, then in the middle of the meeting he stood forward and said that uh, he wrote up in a piece of paper that I officially am contributing my eyes to your hospital. When I die you can have my eyes for your eye bank. I don't know if we're going to have an eye bank. <laughs> And he was very favorable. He said, any service you like. Actually, I see now that all this uh, politics and communism and this and that is not the solution. The real solution you are people are doing. You see. Serving the people spiritually, materially, in every way, I can see. So, of course, he had his own vision. But uh, he was very favorable. So even the human beings, they have this idea, all right, I'll donate my blood, I'll donate my eyes, donate my heart, my brain, whatever, they, they donate these things. So we can see everything is coming from the Vedas because the cows, they're donating their skin for the Madranga. They have given permission. So everything, what the cow is not giving, why kill the cow? Cow is doing so much service giving all these wonderful things, you see. In fact, it's, all, it's, a, it's a fact that if you breed a cow, the cow, even in old age, will go on giving calves and giving milk right up to about the end. When it stops, it only has another year or so to live. So it's not that uh, very many cows are simply a burden. And at that time, you just let them out to pasture. 
They just eat some grass and go on. It's not that there is a big maintenance cost involved in maintaining cows that are not producing. So Srila Prabhupada requested that uh, if you're going to eat meat, don't eat cow. Don't eat the cow. What's the cow is like your mother? Here we're taking the milk, we're taking all this service, and then when the, we say that, all right, now it's finished, mother is no longer used to kill the mother. She's old, no longer giving service. Kill her off, eat her. This is worse than cannibalistic. Even the Buddhists who are not the practicing monks or who are not uh, strictly following the principle of vegetarianism, they won't eat a cow or a horse because they understand that cows are higher on the level of reincarnation. If they're going to all eat meat, they'll eat some pig, goat, or some sheep, something else lower in the level. You see. They won't eat a cow, or a horse, or a monkey. They won't. It's forbidden. So, it's not something very really extraordinary. If we understand, and nowadays people are saying, yes, we accept reincarnation. Any modern person you bring up, oh yes, I believe, I think I believe, some don't, you know, but it's a very popular topic. So many people believe in reincarnation. It's in the fad. It's the modern thing to do. All right, even if they're atheists, don't believe in God. Buddhists don't believe in any supreme God. But they don't kill the cow because they understand that for everything we do, we get a reaction. Therefore, if we kill a cow, who is a higher type of animal, then we're going to get a worse reaction. If we're going to eat something, eat something that doesn't matter very much to the social system, to the something that's not very high on the level of reincarnation. And then to counteract that offense, to do some punya. In the name of religion, they're doing so many irreligion. Philosophically, Christians are very advanced. They believe in the personality of God. They believe in a, that His representative is uh, also sacred and pure. They have so many nice concepts. But somewhere along the line, how did they get into so many bad habits? That's the question. They have nice, much nicer concepts than the Buddhists. But the Buddhist practices are generally much better in terms of uh, their actual performance. So, there's definitely a need for a new renaissance of spiritual understanding. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Hare
Every time with her husband, for no reason, she would uh, create so many problems and distrust. And uh, he was perfectly loyal and faithful husband, but she was always having a certain type of psychological quirks about her behavior with him. So she went to the psychologist. He took her back in hypnosis to her previous life. There found out that in previous life she was also a woman and she had been deserted by her husband. She had been deserted by her husband. So she was from Scotland. And then where in Scotland, what city, what was the house looking like, what was the street, who were the next door neighbors. All these things she could remember. Where, what what uh, church she was married at. So then after taking all these things on video, then they had 500 research workers that were working under him. He sent them with their videos to Scotland and then they photographed the uh, records of marriage and matrimonial from the 18, it was 1800s at that time or 1912 or something like that. And uh, 1800 or something. And uh, the house and everything she had described was exactly as she said it. Because in Scotland, still the same houses are standing for a hundred years even, you can see. So, in this way, they presented this to the whole scientific assembly in Rome. You see. That this is a, this is not a superstition. This is not some kind of, uh, simply, uh, you know, fairy tale or old wives tale, but this is a factual, scientific, recorded evidence. What more evidence you want on reincarnation? And every scientist they accept it. Now, other scientists in England and France, they have different type of, the Russians had taken photographs with this Kiron photography, 100 million volts or something they take uh, through uh, and then produce some special type of ultra, ultra light, and that radiation, they take uh, photographs with that. And as a person was dying, that they, for that they can photograph a person's aura. How far his aura is extending from his body, what's the quality of that. So at this aura, they were photographing a person as he was dying. And just then that person from his body came out, a visible form. And... <laughs> Went to it, hovered for a few seconds and went off. So in so many different ways, they have accumulated so many different types of proofs that any very conscious person, he must say, well, there's, so then there must be reincarnation. So then we should take it a step further that there must be a system. Everything in this world we see, there's a system. There's a system of changing of seasons. There's a system, we eat something, it's automatically digested taken through the whole intestinal to everything and shoved out. You see, when it's no longer got much useful products left in it, also all the filth from inside the body, if the blood is all the dead cells are going out. So many says everything we find is system. Why should we think, all right, when we finally come to the conclusion that there must be reincarnation? So many proofs are there. We can't just dogmatically say that because after Constantinople's, what Constantinople's meeting where they tore the Bible's pages out and rewrote the whole thing, that because the present day Bible doesn't give any conclusive scientific description of the matter, therefore religiously we can't accept. Neither can we say, well, because we haven't personally seen it with our bare eyes, or we haven't seen atoms with our bare eyes either. What more scientific proof do scientists want? The Vedas, the Buddhists, all the uh, ancient religious institutions that didn't have their scriptures rewritten by whimsical priests and kings, they all very clearly describe that there is reincarnation. Jains, Buddhists, Hindus, all the ancient cultures, they all describe. So then why, then why we should also understand there must be a system. Not that just by accident then we are hover around and then the first vacant, uh, you see, uh, womb we somehow go in there. There must also be a system. Since everything else has a system. You see, and that system is described. This system, when they had the meeting, then they just say, everyone accepted, yes, there must be reincarnation. But then when the point came up, then there must be a system. 
for judging what birth one should get for progression. That they were a little bit hesitant, but more or less some accepted. But then when they brought up, therefore, if one misbehaves, if one de- doesn't develop his consciousness, but rather his consciousness becomes more base and more gross, he can rescind back to the animal kingdom. Whoa, was there a human a cry? No, no, no. How can well, yeah, so many people, you know, they just we are very upset. We go back to the animal kingdom. We can somehow again go back. Wow. Because, you see, they were very, they want to do everything, you know, but just be guaranteed, all right, at least I'm a human being next life. You know, it's all right. But the prospect of having to be a dog or a cat or something else, that the scientists didn't want. Because they knew that being a human being, you have some, you see. You have some, especially after all the animals they'd eaten, to become an animal was, you know, that meant for sure they'd be on somebody's dinner table. (laughs) So, this was a great shock. But they should be scientists. They should understand Krishna consciousness is scientific. Jai Jagannath Shivadra Balaram. Jai Panchatattva Ki. Jai. Krishna consciousness is very scientific. It answers these questions very nicely. And if they follow that very scientific understanding, then they'll understand that killing animals like cows, uh, even goats, I mean even uh, these horses or other uh, elephants, these are not beneficial to the human society. Anyway, when they die, they have to die sooner or later. If someone is that addicted, he can eat them. See, might be a little... They're worrying about the taste. They want to kill when they're nice and fresh. This is all very barbaric. So as a result, they have to suffer from the laws of karma. So this Krishna conscious movement is meant to actually save people from their distress, to save them from their uh, miseries. Maharaj Pariksit, he went around, he saw that this was going to create a whole string of distress in society. So he immediately stopped Kali, ready to kill him for disturbing because if one person starts to torture the cow, then it creates a whole chain of bad karma in the country, in the world. So everybody acts properly, following their Vedic principles. Then the karma which is produced is also good. If one person has bad karma, the, his suffering also causes the suffering of others. It creates a chain reaction. One person is performing transcendental activity that creates good fortune for hundreds and thousands of unlimited of living entities. Sarva Mangalam, good fortune for everyone. So when we serve Krishna, what that does to all of our activities is it purifies them. The activities in this world are either goodness, passion, or ignorance. King Kali was doing something in ignorance. Parikshit Maharaj was protecting, it was goodness. The different, you can say, well, the royal decorations have a touch of passion in them. In this way, everything within the material world is a mixture of goodness, passion, and ignorance. But if you add Krishna, Krishna is the secret or the special ingredient which when added makes everything perfect, purifies it. So by adding Krishna, then everything becomes perfect. Without adding Maharaj Pariksit, he is going to conquer nations. Actually, he's already the emperor of the whole world. So it's not like he's going on some new aggression. He's already the emperor. But he's going from place to place to see what 
how everything is going on according to the systems of God consciousness, of Krishna consciousness. If it's some transgression, then he'll immediately, then he'll have his aggression, then he'll have his violence to knock down any type of disturbance to society. But if he was going simply for his own sovereignty without any connection, then what is the use of hearing about his activities? There are so many great historical kings, Napoleon Bonaparte, or this one or that one, who went and tried to conquer and conquered other nations, Hitler. What spiritual hearing is there for all those people? Because they are trying to create their own dominion, expand their political power. You see, it wasn't so much a crusade to establish a higher order of God consciousness in a real sense. Or if it was a self-styled crusade, it wasn't an authorized crusade, which was really going to increase the God consciousness amongst the people. But Maharaj Pariksit was an authorized crusade. Therefore, we can hear about it and we can benefit. We can gain spiritual instruction. The activity, even if it seems material of some devotee, externally may appear material, but it's also devotional. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Iha Yasya Hare Dasya Karmana Manasa Gira Nikola Swapya Vasta Su Jivan Mukta Su Uchite that devotee is already in a liberated platform. So here the cow is being glorified. People wonder why, why the Indians don't kill their cows. They can get so much food. First of all, anyone saw an Indian cow today, you would know there wasn't much food on it. But the actual thing is the cow is doing so much service. Now because the Indian government hasn't laid the line down about... Uh, cow and bull killing, that the price of bullocks has increased ten times in India. And bullocks, only four or five percent maximum, if that much, only one or two, a few percent can afford tractors. Now with the petrol prices going up, in India petrol and in England petrol are the same price. But look at the difference in the economy. Sometimes the big foreign... Uh, these uh, foreign aid institutions come with all their big machines, donate to the farmers and all that. And then you come back five years later, all the machines are lying there unused. They say they're broke and we had to spend, you know, so many thousand rupees for a spare part. You know, we can't afford this. Too much trouble. So many, did, so many, one devotee in Argentina was driving the tractor and he died. Who has ever died plowing the field with a cow, with a bull? At the worst, if you get, if you're real envious, and they get, and then the bull can maybe knock you down. But uh, here, the the devotee, when he he was driving, and the tractor fell. So many. I mean, at least at least I've heard four or five devotees in our movement alone have died in tractor accidents. In Hyderabad or in Ahmedabad, there was one devotee. The tractor was going on a side; it fell right over on him, died. So they give these big machines, the people that to maintain, it's not economical. If they calculate how much they're spending on the depreciation, the cost of the machine, cost the lack of rupees for a tractor, $12,000, 6,000, 7,000 pounds. You see. So for, in the previous time, you could get a cow for a, a pair of bulls, you could get for 700 rupees even 10 years ago. Now it's costing 4,000 for a good pair, 6,000 for a good pair. But even at 6,000 rupees, so a tractor can do 10 times or 5 times as much as a pair of good bullocks. A good bullock can say, 
uh, cultivate without with this simple primitive uh, equipment one acre a day. So a tractor, how many acres? Unless it's a very big tractor, the kind of small tractors they use in India, they can only do about 10 or 12 acres in a day anyway. But for that, you're spending so much more. So it simply creates a unemployment. Then there's a little shortage. Sometimes you see in India, you want to go buy some uh, gasoline or petrol. The people are lined up a half a kilometer with their cans waiting for the diesel. The shortage, the can supply, trucks broke down, this, that. So, so many artificial programs Rather than try to develop, they don't think that this is all right, very big advancement. But in the end, so many people will be put out of jobs, then you have more unemployment, more difficulties. There should be an overall understanding of what is the real necessities of life. And if people are spiritually orientated, then they don't mind even living in a simple house. Actually living in a, as we mentioned before, in a grass hut with a thin, nice mud wall and cow dung is very aesthetic, it's very nice. Rich people, I had a nice three-story, three-story he built a mud house. That way on the bottom two floors it was very cool and very warm, very insulated. Very, very nice. Even he could have built a brick house, what's the need? The only time places they build brick houses is in the country is where they are afraid of thieves because the mud house they can go through the wall at night, steal something. The brick house is, you can't get through the wall. So if people are spiritually orientated, culturally orientated, then they don't mind. They like it. Even if they have a choice, they prefer it. It was only the kings who built big fortresses out of bricks and big palaces. Otherwise, the brahmanas and the common people, they were very satisfied in the Vedic time, living in their grass house. What is the need of working so hard? You find people work their whole life to build a house out of brick and everything, nice house. In London nowadays, to buy a house, how many hundreds of thousands of pounds it costs? <clears throat> but they're only getting three bedrooms. They're not getting like a very big space. It's still crowded. I saw this one person, he had a compound of 12 houses. One for his, this one, one for that one. The whole family lives there. Every son had his own little house in the compound. One special goshala. <clears throat> like a whole little village, just one family. Plenty of room, fresh air. And the whole thing, you could build it for about thousand, two thousand pounds. So, what they used to build, well, they build out of bricks, the temples and the king's houses. So today, you find the palaces ruined and you find the temples standing from ancient India. And you don't find the other, because the people used to live in the simple houses. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His birthplace, when I came there, it had a, a grass hut, which is the very place of his birthplace. And then, a few years later, some sudden innovation, they tore it down and made a grass hut out of concrete. Prabhupada said, this is very bad. That was like a historical thing. But that was so, you could see that the house that was standing there was hundreds of years old. They just kept uh, improving it. Now they took it down and made it all, you know, made the wood for the, uh, pull in the, the, made the grass roof out of concrete. All, you know, just made an imitation with the, the wood that was holding it up. They made that out of concrete with the knots on it. They thought that was very nice. It was very disgusting. <clears throat> that uh, they tore it down, aesthetic, historical thing, you know, made this imitation kind of replica, which, you know, lost some of the historical and aesthetic mood. Srila Prabhupada, he appreciated the Vedic culture very much, even when he would tell us a few of those Kopal Bhar jokes. 
Why would he say that different type of jokes? Because he knew, you know, even the jokes he would say, he would laugh and we would just sometimes stare without really understanding. Because they were filled with so much instruction. They were filled with so much uh, Vedic culture. Just like, just like one of the stories how uh, Krishna Chandra, this king, he's actually the king of Navadvip. Navadvip was within his kingdom, but his, uh, his capital was in Krishnanagar. Minister, you can say, who is like a court jester. In other words, probably explain that in the kingdom, in the emperor's uh, or the king's uh, palaces, it was so he uh, heavy all the time. People were coming in with their complaints. They wanted immediate justice. The king would see the thing and he may give a death sentence. He may arrest someone. So many different politics and, and uh, things going on that it was very heavy. So they would have one person who was very, very intelligent. And he would have the, he'd be the only person he could spoof on the king. In this way, there'd be like sometimes a little bit of a relief. Otherwise, if it's just all heavy, then how can you go on? It needs to be a little bit of light relief. But because he was so intelligent, he would also advise the king in different ways. Sometimes he would, by his own more or less pragmatic, practical humor, and intelligence, intelligence, he'd be able to save the situation of all the big military and political brains. They, they would be stumped under certain situations. But anyway, just as an example, I mean, like Prabhupada gave the example, he would come, sometimes uh, the king, you know, he would, he would also, he had to keep the, the gravity of his other ministers, but this particular person, he could also spoof on and everyone just took it as a, you know, this was all allowed. But if he would spoof on his general or someone else, then their, their own prestige would be hampered. They couldn't perform their duties to the king. It's so like Gopal, he came in one day, the king said, Gopal, you're an ass. He said, I'm an ass. He said, I'm not an ass. Sir. There's a difference between me and an ass, your lord. He says, no, you're an ass. I beg to differ. But there's a difference between me and an ass. Oh, what is that difference between you and an ass? He said, well, sir, he stood, measured off the distance between him and the king and said, about uh, six feet, sir. <laughs> so, he, he could do that, but uh, if anyone else did it, they need their head cut off. You're very clever, Gopal. So one time the king, he was touring also his kingdom, even 300, 250 years ago. And there he saw that one Brahmana was carrying a Shaligram Shila around his neck in a silken cloth, which is a system. If you move a Shaligram, you're supposed to wear it around your neck. So he saw that the Brahmana Suddenly, you know, looked around, he didn't see the king, and then on the side of the road, he passed his nature call. You know, actually, you know, passed stool. So the king was shocked. But here's a Brahmana carrying a Shaligram Shila. How could he do such a thing? Just evacuate like that. So he was just completely disgusted. He came back and immediately told his uh, grenadier and his you know, aide de camp that you find out this Brahman and bring him to me. They brought the Brahman, he was shaking, you know. He said, You are carrying a Shaligram Shila today? He said, Yes, you. <clears throat> Your Lord. And then, uh, Yes, my Lord. And then he said, Well, you were evacuating while carrying the Shaligram Shila. Narayana Murti. For this you call yourself a Brahmana. You are going against the Brahminical culture. It is my judgment that at sunset you will have your head off. With Brahmanas like you in the kingdom, the whole culture will be ruined. People will be led into your religion. All with his head at sunset. 
Brahmana was just shaking. What, did, what could he say? But then Gopal, so Gopal came to his rescue. So my, your majesty. But he was only the carrier of the Shaligram Shiva. What is that? He was the carrier. He was, he was just passing stool while he was carrying the Shaligram Shiva. But Lord, but he was only the carrier. So what do you mean the carrier? Well, Lord, today you were riding on your horse. The horse was your carrier? Yes. What of it? So your horse, when the horse just, you see, passed his dung, then did you go and take a bath and wash your hand and do all the purificatory rites as if you had personally... Uh, you see, called, uh, honored your nature, call. Gopal, you are very clever. All right, free the Brahmana. <laughs> so, this is considered to be, this is like the humor in Bengal. People read this, they, it's very, they like very much. But, so, here's a very simple story. You see, ultimately, whether the Brahmana was right or wrong, but all right, he made a mistake for that to leave. The lesson, he'll definitely never... You see, the king was saying, put the shaligram on a tree, something, why you carry it and go on with this business you were doing. You see. But anyway, Gopal, by his pragmatic common sense, somehow or another, he saved the Brahmana, who definitely never did something like that again. The point is that even the humor, look at it, the, the duty, just like today, we in prediction, Maharaj is protecting the Vedic culture. The, even the humor there, the king is protecting Brahminical culture. If a Brahmana would do something un he'd be chucked off. The king was respectful to all the Brahmanas, but if a Brahmana did something, he was more severely punished. He was considered more responsible if he did something which was directly against Brahminical culture. But if he committed some other little type of small social thing, then of course, sometime he would be forgiven. The other people, they couldn't take any action. It would have to be taken only by the king who is already high. And even then, they were very reluctant. Only if it was something very obvious. Okay, they were protecting, but their thing was they were protecting. So here, what is the role of the king? What is the responsibility of a brahmana? So many things are involved in a simple humorous story. So many instructions are there. Otherwise, Prabhupada would go on telling different things like that to us. So, Vedic culture is so perfect. Everything has got a spiritual purpose and a spiritual perspective. So similarly, in our Krishna kind of movie, we want to bring the people up to that spiritual awareness by drama, by movies, by, by lectures, by different programs. Now the people, their consciousness is practically simply eating, sleeping, mating, defending, nothing else. No consideration within all that of any spiritual objective. They don't eat for any spiritual objective. They eat just to feed their face. They're not sleeping for any spirit. They're not even having the children. There's no spiritual objective, having their different affairs. What is the spiritual? But everything in Krishna Kaya is completely the opposite. The counterculture, everything has a spiritual objective. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by his mercy, even those people who have got no access to spiritual understanding, no access to spiritual objective, no access to any kind of God consciousness, he gives them the special mercy if they simply chant Hare Krishna, take Krishna Prasanna, dance in ecstasy, they'll become purified. They can also get pure love for Krishna in this very life, which takes... Millions and millions of years for even the demigods. They can't even hope to obtain that elevated status. The demigods see the pure devotees of Krishna, you see, with divine forms, with four hands and with different defined forms. We may not be able to see because our vision is just made of skin and, and flesh and mucous membranes. Therefore we can't see. 
The someone who fully dedicates to Chaitanya Baba's movement, he becomes transcendentally situated. That is Lord Chaitanya's special mercy. No matter what his previous material situation was due to so many karmas, reincarnation, it's all transcendent. The Chaitanya Chaitanya described that one cannot commit enough sinful activities that even one Harinam cannot destroy. So Lord Chaitanya does not lack any potency to purify us. Simply now we have to take this mercy that's being given. It's not that because we're the most fallen, we're in some very good position. We're in the worst position materially. Going simply into hell. But we can make the best use of the bad bargain by becoming devotees of the Panchatattva. Krishna has expanded himself in these five forms. As devotee, expansion of devotee, avatar of devotee, energy of devotee, and pure devotee. Simply to give us his mercy. So why don't we take it? What is 60, 70, 50 years? How long do people live nowadays? In this short time, if we just stick to chanting Hare Krishna, taking Krishna prasadam, avoiding all type of nonsense, which is of no use to us, we don't lose in anything. And we gain everything. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Dvaita Gadadharo Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindu Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Dvaita Gadadharo Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindu Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare